Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel and in this video we're going to continue with our series on Clio or on the TKT Clio test. For those of you who are teaching in Clio programs or learning about Clio or getting ready to take the TKT Clio test from Cambridge. Um, in this video in particular we're going to talk about meeting language demands. So what are we talking about here? So let's jump straight into the video so we can understand. So language demands are the linguistic demands that um, the curriculum subject or maybe the students will have depending on what is being learned. And they include usually language features that we saw before. And so we're going to address those language features here. And genres, which is a word for the different types of text. So why are we talking about this? Um, well, there's two reasons here. Learning a subject in the native and target languages is not the same. So for example, if I'm learning science in my native language, I may be able to focus on science content. But if I'm learning science in English, and English is not my, my native language, I may need to learn some of the language of English that will allow me to express what, what I'm learning in science. Right? So this is, um, this is why it's, it's, imp it's important for us to be teaching genres and language features. Um, also, different subjects have different language demands. Okay, so one genre that may be activated a lot in a math class may not be activated in a science or a geography or an economics class, etc. One specific language feature that I need for art may not be as needed for, let's say, um, you know, geography or PE or another type of subject. Okay, so this is what we're talking about. So let's uh, jump straight into genres and language features and see what they have. So I know this looks like a lot, but I'm going to go through this table with you. And then we're going to see an example at the end of this video. So here this table has three basic columns, genre, purpose, and example. So which genre are we talking about? What's the purpose of this genre? And what's an example? So um, if the genre is discussion, right, my students may need to present arguments. So for example, if I'm discussing animal rights, if I'm having a discussion in the classroom, this is an example of when I'm going to use the genre. Explanation is another genre. Um, the students may need to provide reasons. So for example, when they explain why lightning happens. A procedure is a genre. So because I may need to instruct how to do or make something. So how to make uh, a cake or how to conduct an experiment, for example. And so an example is listing the steps of a recipe. Persuasion is another genre because I may need to convince someone when I'm creating an ad for a service or an ad for a cause, right? Or a brochure for a campaign. I may need persuasion as a genre here. Recounting and writing biographies or putting together biographies, I may need to, I may need to do that to retell past events or things that happen. So retelling how something was done, how somebody lived their life, a famous person for example, those are examples of this genre. Um, reports are another genre because they're used to present facts if I'm describing an experiment for example, which also may be involved in the genre procedure as we talked about before. And narratives because I may need narratives to entertain and inform. So for example, if I'm telling a story or a folk story. So those are examples of genres. So let's look at the language features associated with these genres. If I'm discussing, if I'm engaging my students in a discussion, um, at the sentence level, I may need passive voice, conditionals, complex sentences or reporting. And at the word level, I may need to teach them connectives so they so that they can make complex sentences, or I may need to teach topic-specific vocabulary, or even verb tenses for a review for passives. Explanations, so that's my genre. So I need present tenses, sequencing words, complex sentences at the sentence level. At the word level, I need to be teaching technical vocabulary, connectives and conjunctions, sequ sequ sequencing words, sorry, like first and then. Procedure another genre. I need imperatives, expressing result, quantities, and at the sentence level, at the word level, sequencing words, numbers, quantifiers, adverbs. Those are all things I need to teach in this, uh, they're related to this genre. Persuasion. 
I need to teach my students how to write a hook to catch the reader's attention at the beginning of an essay. Uh, presentation language, modals or modal verbs, verb tenses at the sentence level. And at the word level, I may need power verbs or persuasion, comparatives. Recount or biography genre. Introduction, um, a recount also always has introductions. A biography always has introductions. Past tenses are needed in this type of um, genre. Closing, how to close an essay or just a recount of something. So I'll need past tenses again at the word level two. Time connectives, when, after, before. For reports, present tenses, descript descriptive statements at the sentence level. Adjectives and specific vocabulary at the word level. Narrative as a genre, past and present tenses, sequencing, adjectives, time connectives. So as we see, um, we have a lot of decisions to make here, both at the sentence level or at the word level, depending on the genre. So let's talk a little bit more about the genre-based approach. What is the genre-based approach and what's an example of it? When I'm teaching a different genre, one of those genres that we saw, recount, narrative, persuasion, etc. Um, I need to go through certain phases of the genre. And the phases are contextualizing, modeling, joint construction, independent construction, comparing. That means the students will be analyzing the genre first, understanding what the elements of the genre are, and then they'll be putting one sample together, and they're going to be putting one independent sample, and then they're going to compare their samples and learn from each other. In the second part of this video, or the next part of this video, we're going to be looking at an example of how to implement the genre-based approach for a writing lesson. All right, so let's see one example of a genre-based, of the genre-based approach put into action. This is a lesson where the students are going to learn how to write a resume. I notice that the first topic here, the first title in blue is what's in a resume? And the activity is leading the students to look at what a resume is. Here's an example. Here's another one that we can, we can expand. And underneath, there's a link to a resume analysis template. So we notice here that the students are familiarizing themselves with the genre by analyzing a couple of samples of that genre and using a form. And when you click on this blue uh, button here, they will open this um, particular element where they're going to use a table to break down a resume. So they're understanding the genre, they're naming the sections, um, they're being asked why are some verbs in the past, and, and they're being asked what they notice in this resume in terms of design, reader's experience, how long the sentences are, etc. So, so this first activity here is focused on introducing the genre First of all, as a text, they're going to read a resume, and then they're going to break it apart by using the template. Right after that, the students will move to a group project, where they will um, be put in groups, and they're given a job description, or some job descriptions, right? The job descriptions are here. You can see them now. And um, after reading the job description, they're going to, in groups, they're going to pick one Brazilian personality, uh, those are famous personalities, some are dead and some are alive. Then they're going to look at their uh, Wikipedia description and put together a resume for this personality for one of those jobs that is being described here. So that's a group activity. Students are going to be doing that together. So first they analyze the genre. Now they're going to put, it, put one sample together as a group first. Right? And after they finish that, they will, do, they will write an individual resume. So this page here invites them to uh, look at some resume designs, look at some free templates, and by using a rubric, they'll be putting one together. And of course, after they put the resume together, they'll have an exercise where they're going to edit their peers' resumes using the rubric, comparing the resumes to their peers so they can have a chance to improve what they created. So instead of just giving an example and saying put one together from scratch, first the teacher had the students analyze the text, the type of text they need to create, 
put one together as a group and then put one together individually and go through a process of reflecting on what they put together as a group. So as you can see from the lesson sequence that we just showed you, these steps here of the genre-based approach have been put together or implemented, right? When are the contextualizing and modeling happening? Well, while the students are reading the genre as a text and while they're breaking it apart by analyzing it, right? The teacher will be modeling and contextualizing here and the students will also be contextualizing and learning from the models that they're given. And then they're gonna be putting one together when they work in groups, that's the joint construction, independent construction, the individual work, and the assessing their peers' work and reflecting is the comparing part. So those are the steps of the genre-based approach. I hope that has made it clear for you. That's a very effective way of teaching genres in CLIO. Always start from a sample that you want your students, of what you want your students to create. That always helps. But make sure that you break it apart and give them the time to put it together, first in groups and then individually. So if you enjoyed this video, uh, please like it, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment for us, and see you in the next video.